Hello patron and welcome back to my life. It's Writer Wednesday where I give you my tips and advice on the art and the business of writing and tell you how I do what I do as an indie author. I don't know, I'm torn between being a little bit sick of that intro and just liking the idea of keeping on doing it regardless. <laughs> Today we're answering a question from Rian Newton who asks in a general sense, how do you tell when your work is good enough? How do you know when it's ready to start actually putting out there? Maybe publishing it yourself or submitting to an agent or whatever? Well, this isn't like the most difficult question in writing and publishing and art and everything. So I should start off by saying, for anybody who doesn't know, when I started publishing my own work. This is not how you should do it, this is how I did do it. I wrote my first real story in 2012 and published it. I just did it, I just went straight on out there and just started putting my work out. But there's a few things that are a lot different from a lot of other people. First of all, before that, in my teens and early 20s, I had written literally millions of words. They weren't good words, but they were words. That is a lot of practice before I started actually trying to do this professionally. Also, three years before I wrote and published that book, I had been writing screenplays and scripts and also getting those workshopped Basically every other week I would submit a script to my filmmaking group, it would be read, it would be critiqued by the group. There were a lot of really amazing good writers and storytellers in that group. I got a lot of good feedback. Writing scripts and screenplays is not the same thing as writing a book, but there was a lot of good storytelling advice in general that I learned and picked up on. So I, I wasn't going in entirely blind, right? And with all that being said, I absolutely should not have published that book. It was not good enough. That was, that was Touch Trilogy, this one that you may have seen before. I should not have published this, or the novellas that came right after it, Non-Zombie and Non-Zombie 2, or Hit Girls, the book that came out after that. None of that should have been published. It was not good enough. I still like the stories. I still like the characters. The writing was just not up to snuff. It was just not good. On a related note, over the years, I've gone back and forth on whether I should pull those books down, unpublish them, stop selling them, or if I should go back and rewrite them, but I've left them there for a couple of reasons. I like having an early record of my work, the work that I started trying to put out professionally. I like that people can go back and see those books and see that when I started out, I was not good. I think that with too many mega successful and well-beloved authors, we kind of think they were always at that skill level, but like, I would really love to go see the first book Neil Gaiman ever completed that no no publisher has ever or will ever touch because it's just not good. Anyway, my books in the Realm Keeper series were, I still think, worth publishing. That doesn't mean that they are perfect, that doesn't mean that they could benefit from more work, but I had learned a lot about writing in a short period of time, and I had the benefit of working with a co-author, Zach, who knew a lot about story and could help spot the biggest glaring errors that I made when I was writing them. I should say that we were able to see errors in the other's work because we, we worked together on them from conception to the final product, and that is like having a good developmental editor, as long as your partner is actually good at what they do, and Zach is. I'd still love to give those books a professional edit one day, maybe like a, a, a rewrite, like a new draft, but most of the major issues were ironed out between me and Zach. Similarly, with Rebel Yell, I had the benefit of an incredible pool of really good beta readers. All of them gave me fantastic advice, well, the ones who actually read the book anyway, and one of them actually gave me a full-on developmental edit. She was incredible, and I was like, oh my god, this is a developmental edit. And she was like, yeah, well, and so uh, one of our company goals is to actually hire her as a developmental editor this year. She she does that, professionally, as it turns out. And of course, the Underrealm books have, at this point, been extensively edited by multiple other people, including Sterling and Stone, and then there's Karen, and then Cassie, like, they've gone through the ringer, and they have also had beta readers. And that, I think, leads us to the answer to Rhea's question, which is that in almost every case, you are incapable of telling whether your book is good enough or not. That could be for two very different reasons. You could be like me and think that the first thing you wrote was great and totally marketable and it should absolutely be out there for sale when it really shouldn't. Or you could have the reverse problem and spend months or years sitting on a manuscript that is absolutely good enough to put through professional editing and then get out there and start building your professional career off. So as painful as it is, you gotta open yourself up to honest feedback and critique. And I don't just mean hiring a professional editor. I mean talking to people, preferably other writers, who can actually give you useful advice on how good what you're doing 
is, whether it's good or not, and what's wrong with it, and what is maybe good about it already, and that you should seek to do more of. And the more informed, helpful feedback you get, the better. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. You might go to one person and they have things to say about your style that won't necessarily be a problem for everyone. Like, not all of us have to write like Hemingway. In fact, if everyone did, I wouldn't read books. As per usual, self-awareness is your best friend here, but you also have to be analytical of the feedback. Some feedback is just more accurate, more helpful, and more valid than other feedback. It's just true. And for a lot of, by the way, traditionally published authors, that feedback is one of the things they get out of the submission process. In a mountain of rejection letters, they will get some editors or publishers or agents who are kind enough to give some actual advice about, hey, I don't want your manuscript, but I noticed some good things and I noticed some things you could improve. Stephen King talks about this in his book on writing, how one of his earliest pieces of feedback that he got from an editor who was rejecting him in the the letter ended up being one of the best pieces of writing advice he got in all of the decades of his career. You don't have to go through that submissions and rejections process. So if you want to be an indie author, you can get that feedback elsewhere from writers you trust and from other, other people in the surrounding industry. And if you are a Writer Wednesday person, feel free to talk to me about it. Don't take that as a blanket promise to read your entire manuscript or be your full developmental editor for free or anything like that. Obviously, I can't do that, and it would be stupid of me to promise that, but I'll take a look at what you've got and offer my advice. If you're unsure of where your skill level lies in terms of being ready to publish or not, send it to me. I will read as much of it as I need to in order to isolate what I think about your, your style, your writing, your plot, story, all that sort of stuff. I will only ask of you two things. One, don't take anything that I have to say personally. I will not be personally insulting you. I will only be critiquing your work. And so if you take that as a personal insult, then I will be personally insulted. Ha <laughs> ha! And two, my opinion is not necessarily more valid than anybody else's. I might not like things about your book that are the exact things you want to do with your book. And, and so that's fine. Again, the more sources of good informed feedback you can get, the better. So please. Seek out a second opinion, even if you do also ask for mine, okay? Okay, and that is it for today, patron. Thank you so much to Rhea for the awesome question. I know this one was complicated and hard, and so my answer might have been a little bit meh, but I hope it was at least somewhat helpful. For everyone else, as always, if you have more questions about this, you want me to discuss a particular thing that I've mentioned further, or you have an entirely new question you want me to talk about, drop it in the comments. Writer Wednesday exists to help you with whatever you might be struggling with. Thank you for watching. Thank you, as always, for your incredible support, and I will see you tomorrow. Tomorrow? Next Wednesday. Ha <laughs> ha! Bye!